I started the analysis <laughs> and wow, there were a few things that surprised me quite a bit. In fact, I could make quite a few energy optimizations right away and for free, even without the photovoltaics. So I should have probably done them a long time ago. Hey, what's up? This is Václav here. Today I'm starting something new and it is exciting. It's gonna be a journey that's gonna take me about a year and uh, I will take you with me. Now, what is this project gonna be about? Well, about Home Assistant, obviously, but what in Home Assistant? So far, we were automating things like the heating, the shutters, the irrigation, we did the water leak sensors, Garbage collection, obviously, my pet project. We did multimedia. I think there's going to be more multimedia coming. We did security with some fancy cameras, weather. In the last one, we did the air uh, quality sensor. It was pretty cool. So if you missed any of those, there is a link. But there is one important area that is still waiting for me, and that is energy management. But what does it even mean, energy management? And what are my goals with that? Now, you're probably thinking, am I going to spend half of this video explaining why and what am I going to do instead of just jumping straight to doing and showing you how I do that, like I usually do in my videos? Well, in this case, really. Because making sure that you and I understand what I'm trying to achieve before we do that is in fact quite important. If I don't want to spend all this time and money and at the end, you will say, well, it's nice, but what's the benefit? What's the purpose? What are the reasons why we did that? And these reasons are individual, I'm afraid. They are different for me and they'll be different for you. So I explain you mine, but you have to do your homework and think about what is important for you. So for me, my main objective is to save the energy consumption from the grid. That is electricity. And if possible, I'd like to get rid of gas later on as well. But why, you ask? Well, I really have three reasons. First, sustainability. It's a very important topic for me. I guess I do a number of things already, but I like to take it to the next level. I like to make leap forward. So that is reducing consumption of the fossil fuels as close to zero as possible. Second, financials, obviously. The prices of energy are lately crazy. We all know that. And I like to mitigate that. But you see, instead of being a victim of the situation and just complaining about it, I like to see that as an opportunity to change. Because it suddenly makes the business case for investing into the energy management more viable. So I like to see it as a positive thing. Finally, I like to reduce our dependency on external energy supply. I like to be able to run some at least vital things on our own, even if the external source of energy is not available anymore. I mean, given the latest development in Europe, I think it's quite understandable as well. Okay, so now that we know why, how I would like to do that. Now, I will have to get some photovoltaic panels installed and some battery. You probably figured that. Without that, scheduling the consumption of different appliances would make any difference because they will always consume energy from the grid, right? Uh, but uh, there's just one small piece of it, right? What is more important uh, is right now, if I would like to control my consumption based on the current and forecasted photovoltaic production and the state of charge of the battery, I need to understand my current consumption. So uh, then I need to choose the photovoltaic parameters and the contractor to deliver that. And I will be talking about it in the next video. But to understand my consumption, uh, that means how I consume for what and what part of that I can schedule and run when I have energy surplus uh, that I can do now whilst I'm waiting for the contractor to deliver the panels. And I'm afraid that's going to be sometimes in the winter because the waiting times are now very long. So I started the analysis <laughs> and wow, there were a few things that surprised me quite a bit. In fact, I could make quite a few energy optimizations right away and for free, 
even without the photovoltaics. So I should have probably done them a long time ago. So let me show you how I did that so we can perhaps do some of that as well. I didn't measure the consumption of most of our appliances before. The ones I did was the washing machine, the dryer and the uh, charging of our electric car. And the reason for that measurement was that I wanted to know when they started and stopped working so that I could send some notifications since they're in the other part of the house. Uh, so it was quite handy. So I knew when they stopped so I can go upstairs and load the next batch of laundry, for example. Or for the electric vehicle, it could remind me that the battery is empty and I'm not charging at night. But then when the home assistant came with the energy panel, out of curiosity, I bought the three-phase energy monitor from Shelley. So I could show my panel and it was quite interesting, but I didn't really do anything with that. I was just showing it and I was just looking at that like you see behind me on the screen. Then I compared the numbers and I started to wonder. It shows that my daily consumption was somewhere around 20 to 30 kilowatt hours per day. It could be up to 50 when I was charging the car. And then if I look at the dryer and the washer, they were about three and a half kilowatt hours together. And when I charged the car, it was usually 10 to 15 kilowatt hours. What the hell is the rest? Okay, uh, at the time I had my old tower PC, which was quite powerful, but it would take another one and a half kilowatt hours. Still, where's the rest? So I got a few of these Zigbee plugs with the power metering. There was a deal for a pack of five for 56 euro, pretty good deal. So I got that. They handle 16 amperes, so I could put them pretty much anywhere. The installation is simple. It's a standard Zigbee device. I use Zigbee to MQTT, so I just permit the joint. Then I plug in the plug into the socket, and then I hold the power button for a couple of seconds until it starts blinking. It'll be automatically discovered and it will join the network. Then I can rename it. So I hit the rename button and I give it a name. So this one is going to be for the printer. And I say I'd like to update the Home Assistant uh, entity ID as well. And then hit the rename button. Then I open the device and I check its parameters. Specifically, I want to make sure that after the power outage, the device is going to be on by default. To add them to the energy panel, press C to go to command palette, then search for energy configuration. From there, uh, go to the individual devices and add all the entities that measure the consumption. So in my case, I will add the swimming pool sensor and then I will fast forward to add the others. With that, you can now see the consumption of all the individual devices directly in the energy panel. So then I look at the results. Turns out my biggest consumption is the swimming pool filtration pump. I didn't realize that, even though I probably should have. It's got quite a large motor, about 500 watts, when it's running. When it's running is very important because the recommended filtration time in hours can be calculated by a formula. That is, if I take the water temperature in degrees centigrade and divide it by two, at the number of hours I should run it. Turns out I was running it roughly four hours longer than necessary. <laughs> so I was stupid. The good news is that one is already controlled by home assistant. So I could just change the formula and instantly I'm saving two kilowatt hours every day. <laughs> Very nice. Then what struck me next was that the old, cheap, small wine fridge I had. I had a new one since then. It is three times bigger, but I didn't realize it also takes much less energy. That's interesting. And I don't really need the old one. I kept it running to store the wines I didn't really need, mostly gifts from different people. And it was consuming about one and a half, 1.6 kilowatt hours every single day. And unlike the swimming pool, this one is running the whole year. So that's easy. Wine out, fridge off. And by doing these two things, I'm saving 3.6 kilowatt hours every day. Now, a better comparison is a solar panels today, they have a peak power 450 watts. 
but they do not produce 450 watts all the time. Such panel will produce about 1.5 to 2 kilowatt hours per day in average, based on where they are. So by changing the automation formula and by turning off the fridge, the fridge that I didn't really need, I could just get rid of two solar panels for free. <laughs> wow. Then there is our regular fridge with a freezer. This one takes two and a half kilowatt hours per day. This is quite bad. Today's energy efficient ones, they run the inverter, motor or whatnot. They have consumption below one kilowatt hour per day. I have checked the temperature settings, but that's not the problem. I have consulted with the technicians whether changing the cooling engine would improve it and they said it probably will, will return it to when the fridge was new. Uh, but uh, they were not sure how much because when this fridge was new, the consumption was not a parameter they would provide. And it would be quite expensive. And it doesn't usually make sense for a 15 years old fridge as other things will ultimately break not too long after that. So in a nutshell, I will start planning to buy a new one. Good thing about that is that this fridge would probably break within the next year or two anyhow. So instead of just waiting for that and then being stuck with some bad food inside, I can plan for the replacement right away. And uh, I will have more time to choose the fridge I like instead of just running into the shop and buying the first one they have. So then I will be saving an equivalent of three photovoltaic panels. So this is pretty cool. So that's that. It was pretty useful. I have still a few things left in the other bucket. So let's see if I can find something else. That would be nice. What I did was I opened the switchboard and I turned off all the circuit breakers and I was turning them back on one by one, trying to figure out where is the rest coming from. But I have found no further surprises, I'm afraid. We have a water bed. That one has a 230 watts heater when it's running, but it doesn't run all the time as the bed is quite well insulated. Then, and the house heating it takes 70 watts, but uh, that's just the control system. The actual heating still runs on gas, and I'd like to replace it moving forward as well. So that one is fine. Then I have the network devices and they're all right, except the disk array is consuming quite a bit, but uh, that one is scheduled to go to sleep when it's not used. And uh, the same thing with the printer. That one is configured to turn off automatically at night. I used to have this beefy Windows tower with the powerful graphical card. But I changed that to the new MacBook Pro behind me recently, and that one is not too bad. It's actually consuming much less. Then the kitchen appliances. There's the oven, stove, and the small portable ones. And I checked the lights as well, and they're all right. Now, when I checked the energy panel week after doing the change, I could really see the energy consumption is visibly lower. The swimming pool pump is reduced, and the uh, old fridge is down to zero. So that was quite a good exercise. I should have probably done that sooner. I thought I had it under control. Turns out I was wrong. Then, when I have the solar panels, I'll be able to, for example, charge our car during the day when there is a surplus of energy. Today, we just usually charge it during the night. Sometimes it won't work. Um, I mean, the, when the car is not home during the day and then the battery in the house is just 10 kilowatt hours and that's smaller than the car battery. But we usually charge the car about twice a week. So if we do that once during the weekend and then we will see. We can either do a bit every day or sometimes uh, when we work from home, we can charge the car then. And it won't work during the winter. But still, uh, we can still take part from the grid, but hopefully the bigger part will come from the panels. So that's being it for today. What is your experience with energy management? Is it something you'd like to talk about? Do you find it useful? Do you have any tips or own experiences or recommendations? 
like to share with me or perhaps with the others? Let me know in the comments. Or, you know, maybe even better, I'm going to create a discussion channel on Discord and I will put the invitation in the description. Because as I said, it's gonna take a little bit longer and there's gonna be more videos on the topic. So let's keep it all together. I'm not sure how many people use Discord today. I was myself using it more passively due to my role in Home Assistant, but we will see. At least I will learn something new. Right, so that's being it for today. In the next one, I'll walk you through the process, how I selected the contractor to install the photovoltaic and the battery. I know it's gonna be different country by country, but uh, I hope it's gonna be different discussions about the differences. So let's see. So I'll see you there and until then, bye.